Here's the thing. It was always, always our plan to run the London Marathon this year. In fact, I had qualified as a good for age runner and Mary qualified in a championship start. So we were gonna run it no matter what. And you may have noticed, doesn't look like we're in the UK right now and it's because we're not. We're in Thailand, Bangkok to be precise, and we've moved here. But because of quarantine rules, it's not gonna happen. We're not gonna get to run the London Marathon this year. But that doesn't mean that we can't help you. So I'm gonna give you 10 of the best, 10 race day tips, all the nuggety goodness from inside here to you in a video so that you can have the best race day possible. We wish we were there, not gonna happen. It's as simple as that. We can't have a good London Marathon, so let's let you have a good London Marathon, or a good marathon. But for right now, I've got to go swimming. Here's the way I look at it. You can, I think, lag half marathons and down. You can get away with it, you can prepare poorly, and you can survive. But endurance events, marathons, they're far less forgiving. I'm going to meet Mary for a swim, by the way. So I think ultimately what you want to achieve when you run an endurance event, be it marathon or half Ironman or Ironman, is that you want to achieve two things. You want to reduce the stress, anxiety and pressure around the event as much as humanly possible, but also you want to bring out the absolute best performance that your training could give you. That's the key to a race day when it comes to endurance events. And I'm gonna tell you how you do that or all the things that I wish that I knew before I started running marathons and doing endurance events. But first I need to swim because it's about 89 degrees Celsius. Hi. Oh, hi. Are you ready for a swim? I will be in a minute. Okay, let's do a swim. I nearly said let's do this, but that's Mary's. a hell of a swim. Let's start giving you some tips, shall we? Number one, number one in the background, see what I did there, is about getting to the race itself. It's not even about the race. And what I mean by that is think about the way you're getting to the race, whether you're driving there, whether you're getting a train, the underground bus, whatever. Plan the route out really comprehensively in your head, on a piece of paper, maybe even do the route before the race, just to get that peace of mind that you know exactly where you're going on the day and it's almost second nature rather than on the day looking at maps, wondering where you're going, thinking about it. Because remember, the aim of this is that you will reduce the stress, anxiety and pressure to have your best day. So absolutely planning out the route, knowing even how long it takes to get to the start line is one of the fundamental planning skills that you should have when you're actually doing a big race. And it's got me through a lot of big races with a lot less pressure. So plan it. Well, that was a pretty positive start to the day, wasn't it? What's next in store for Ben and Mary in Bangkok, eh? How do you feel about missing London this year, Mayor Mayor? Oh, I'm gutted to be missing London. But it's nice to make a video and share the tips and things that I would have been thinking about whilst we're here. Yeah, we can share the knowledge. Oops, speed bump. <laughs> so I've done my exercise and now it's time for her exercise and you're now on your way to the race. Picture this. You know how you're getting there, you know exactly the underground or the train or the car or whatever, whatever you're using to get there. Now you need to know where you're going when you get there. That's just as important because it could be that at small local races or marathons that you have to register when you get there, as in you have to pick up your numbers, you have to do all of that there. But with the London Marathon and big marathons, everything gets sent in the post, so you really need to know where you're going to get to the start line. That's the distinction between big races and smaller, more local races, is just what you do when you get there. And again, this is all just reducing anxiety, stress, pressure around a race, and that is absolutely key to bringing out your best performance. <sighs> Breakfast.
breakfast on the balcony is never gonna get old, by the way. And while you're now at the race and you've now registered, it's time to start thinking about what do you do at the start line, because if you don't know London, then you might be waiting there for quite some time. I waited for an hour, and what I did was I took spare clothes and I threw them away, clothes I didn't want anymore because it wasn't particularly warm. So I wanted to hedge my bets, I wanted to stay warm to the start of the race, but that might not be the case with your marathon, but it's just worth thinking about what do you do whilst waiting at the start line in terms of staying warm. Some people wear bin bags, and Mary and I did that in Seville. We walked to the start line wearing a bin bag, looking pretty weird, but it did the job. So start thinking about what you can do whilst you're waiting, because inevitably, there's gonna be a wait. Time to tuck in. Kind of seems appropriate that while I'm waiting for her to go to the toilet, we talk about going to the toilet, and there's no easy way or delicate way of approaching this subject, but what I would say is that you have to make sure that you are really hydrated before the start of the race, but of course that comes with consequences, as in needing the toilet before the race. Luckily, with the London Marathon, there are urinals within the first kilometre and a half, and there are port loos I believe, within the first kilometre as well, so there is an opportunity to stop, but you might be caught short, and you're just gonna have to prepare for that. I certainly wouldn't dehydrate before a race, for fear of it, but hopefully in a Portaloo and Uranus, most big races provide them quite often round the course. Now, come on, time for you to go. Most of my day is currently taken up with meetings online because that's the way it is in Thailand at the moment. It's about, I would say, where we were in the UK in December, January. So we're getting through it, but it is what it is. And while I'm here, I can talk to you about having a plan for the actual race. It's probably my most important tip of all 10, is to have a plan about the pace that you want to run, but let that match up with a heart rate zone. So, for example, let's say I aim to run four 15s per kilometer, and that should keep me in zone two. However, on the day, what you have to take into account is adrenaline, is the buzz, is the crowd. It is gonna spike the heart rate. So you've gotta manage those two things together. You have to have a plan so that you can adapt. And if, let's say, I'm running 4.15s and I'm in zone three or four, I know I've gotta dial it back. So don't just turn up and run because I can't tell you how much adrenaline and excitement changes the way that you feel about how you're running, how easy it is, how hard it is and what it does to your heart rate. So have a plan, stick to it and be able to adapt in race if you need to. That's so crucial. I would say only the most experienced of runners can negotiate this every time. It takes a lot of practice and sadly, it takes getting it wrong sometimes. Hey Mary. And when the working day is done, we get to play, or Winnie gets to play. So our aim is now we're gonna take you to a place called Nichida where uh, Winnie is gonna have a little walk around a lake or in a park, I think, because that's the aim, isn't it? Yeah, there's a dog park where she can go off to leave and stuff. Oh, and by the way, in this, this is our rental car. Now you are in the race. So this is the point where you've got to start thinking about your nutrition because I'll tell you something, there is absolutely no way you are gonna get your best performance without making sure you're fueling properly when you're in the race. So you've got to think about gels and you've got to think about not only when to take them, which you obviously practice a lot in your training leading up to, but you've got to think about what gels that you're taking. Are you gonna take them all with you? Which you can absolutely do and that's what I do. I take my gels with me in a flip belt. Or are you gonna use the gels on the course? Now, just one quick warning about that. That's absolutely fine to do, but nothing new on race day, so do not take a gel that is different to the gels that you've been practicing with because certainly you don't want to get to the point when you are, uh, let's just say you're having a delicate moment coming towards the end of the race because the gels have caused you GI distress. So think about the gels, nothing new on race day, find out what the gels are in the race at the aid stations and maybe practice with them in training if that's the route you want to go. But nail it in training. While Mary's getting direction so that we know where we're going to the dog park, the next point 
is hydration. Obviously, if I'm talking about nutrition, I wanna talk about hydration, and it's the same principle really, is nothing new on race day, and plan. Whether you're gonna take your hydration with you, as in are you gonna wear some kind of hydration vest, or are you gonna use the hydration on course? Again, both really valid ways of doing it. I personally make sure I'm really hydrated before the actual race, so that all I need to do while I'm on the race is top up. And that is a, that's a good way of doing it, but, but equally I've also run marathons, trail marathons in particular, where I've taken a hydration vest with me. Because ultimately, hydration, just like nutrition, if you get it wrong, you're gonna have a torrid day and you're not gonna bring out the best in your training. If you get it right, you're gonna fly, you're gonna feel great, and you're gonna have a good race. And Mary's gonna tell you about the next bit, tip eight, which is kit. Yeah, so practice running in your kit. Again, nothing new on race day. So have some tester runs in all of your kit exactly as you plan to wear it, so that you know exactly how you're gonna feel and that it feels really comfortable. Yeah, you wanna avoid chafing, yeah. blisters, yeah. nipple rubs. Yeah, so all. make sure you practice it for your long runs. Yeah, absolutely. We're actually losing the light now, but it's okay because we're gonna treat you for tips nine and 10 to a segment I think you may have missed. Boom! Look at where we are in a brand new version. And we're a lot higher off the ground. So welcome to Bangkok style. Hopefully I did something really cool there. Mm, I don't I'm know. I'm sure it was. It's hot sitting here. It's really hot. <laughs> it's really hot sitting in the car. No, we can't put the aircon on because the engine's not on. We'll be quick, Mary, I promise you. Two more points that we'd like to make about racing and the day, essentially. And the first one is that you should really have a backup plan, even a plan C. So a plan B and a plan C, because as you well know, Sometimes a marathon can go a bit wrong near the end, right? Oh uh, yeah, I learned that the hard way. And your pace dramatically fell off because you went too hard early. But it's okay because a marathon is more about learning. It's not about nailing it the first time necessarily. It'd be nice if you did. Yeah, I was still absolutely chuffed with my time and everything, but I know I could have, it could have gone differently if I'd have approached it differently. So here's what I would suggest. Have your backup plan, maybe a walk-run strategy. What, that you walk for a minute, then run for four, walk for a minute, something like that. Have a backup plan in your head, or even just dial the pace back. Have a plan B and a plan C pace to get you through the race if your A race pace isn't working out for you because you don't know what's gonna happen on the day. Yeah, and I always think your plan C should be to finish. Yes, with a smile on your face, not dribbling or snot and yeah. stuff like that. So make sure that you have a backup plan and a backup plan to that during the race. Adapt, because as a surfer once said, or someone once said, but it's a surfer phrase, there's always another, there's always another wave, right? Yeah. There's always another race. Yeah. And point 10, and this is quite a simple one, is just after the race, know what you're doing. You can be a little disorientated, disorientated? Disorientated. Disorientated dehydrated as well lots of confusion and things like that if you have yeah. a if you have a solid meeting place with either the people that you're running with or family yeah know where you're going afterwards where you're going to meet your people because quite often as well like marathons are big and there's thousands of people and thousands of supporters so just have a meeting point and just know where you need to get to it can be quite a lot and that's that really it's, yeah. it's you know just having a plan for the whole day because the the aim is to bring out the best version of yourself the training is really important but if you don't then have a plan on race day and just think that the training is good enough to get you to where you want to get you've made a mistake straight away take away the stress anxiety pressure on race day by planning everything out and have a plan and execute it during race to make that training come through yeah you want to just enjoy the day as much as you can Perfect. I think we've summed that up nicely. Now, I'm not doing the 5Ks this week because I've got a little tweak in my quad, so we're sourcing a long run this week. We're going to try and find a long run near where we live. 5Ks next week. Um, Mary, you're going to do yours. 
Yeah. Yeah. But it's I actually yeah, I'm running every other day at the moment. I'm quite enjoying it. Yeah. It's all coming together. Lots of exciting stuff ahead. We're gonna go to the beach at some point soon. Yeah. When he's gonna go swimming. But thanks for sticking with the channel. I hope these tips helped. We'll see you Sunday. Bye.